All right. Well, hello, everyone. Good morning and welcome to Fridays with Fiscal. Um, this is our kickoff for uh, this calendar year. I know we, we did a recap, but um, we're going to get started with budgeting um, for, um, I think it's our first full training, um, if I'm remembering correctly, at least the USAS one. So um, I'm starting here on our main wiki page and whoops. And um, I'll show you where we're going to be looking today in the documentation to talk about budgeting. Um, our main plan today is that we're going to first talk about entering adjustments using the budgeting um, the budgeting pages uh, versus just like entering single adjustments. Um, we're going to talk about that first, and then we're going to go into what it looks like to budget for the new year. So we'll talk about both of those things. Um, of course, at any time, if you have questions, let me know. I do have my chat window open, so feel free to post questions in the chat. Or um, if you want to unmute and ask a question, that is perfectly fine as well. So um, all right, so we'll get, we'll get going. Um, on this main page, I'm just going to scroll down here and hop into our USAS documentation. And I'm going to our budgeting page. Now, I know everyone kind of has their own preference with these, like if you kind of, you know, open them up and click to the specific page, or if you click right on this main category, it'll give you um, additional links like to these pages too. But for this one, we want to click right on budgeting. And um, we're getting the recap here. So I'm going to talk about scenarios and proposed amounts. But I really want to highlight this um, green note here because this is what we're where we're going to be, and this is what. Um, so these are the budgeting steps. They are sort of like walkthroughs, and because this process involves multiple pages, um, this kind of gives you know all the steps along the way, even when they are you know you're going from scenarios to proposed amounts. So um, we'll get into that in a minute. Um, but first let's kind of talk about each of these. So I have my instance up here and we're talking right here, this budgeting dropdown. We have scenarios and proposed amounts. Um, scenarios is where you're going to start. So when we come in here, um, basically you have, uh, each of these different rows in the grid is a different scenario. They're each associated with a specific fiscal year. And then these names, we kind of give those, um, you select those names, you enter those names when you create the scenario. So those would be customized. Um, the scenario essentially is your starting point. So you're going to create a scenario. And then within that scenario, it's going to have one or probably multiple spreadsheets. So this is kind of the preliminary work area where um, you're able to create the spreadsheets, you're able to edit those sheets, um, and then we'll look at the different options because you could edit those in the software or you could pull them out to Excel, um, whatever you know works best for the situation. But this is kind of like the spreadsheet preliminary spot. Um, and then proposed amounts. So once the, once the spreadsheets are all set, those will eventually get pushed to proposed amounts. And we'll definitely talk about this all and look at it in detail, but this is like our little beginning overview. Once we get in here, the proposed amounts area is sort of like, um, it, it's your second step, but it's that before you're actually posting them to the budgets. So um, once I get my information together on the spreadsheets, I'm pushing those forward to show that they're proposed. Um, there are some benefits to this area that we'll talk about when we get to actually talking about the next year um, proposed figures. Um, but while they're in this proposed page, they can still be modified. Um, there's an edit option you can see on here uh, before they're you know, finally posted to the actual accounts. Well, so that's kind of like where we're gonna be the most today. Okay, 
So um, first we're gonna talk about the current year amounts and making adjustments to those current year amounts. So I'm going to click here because I want this part, making budget adjustments in the current fiscal year. So let's get this open here. And you can see we do again sort of have this overview of those scenarios and the proposed amount pages because again, this walkthrough is going to cover both of these things. Um, so let's go down here. So the first thing this is having us do is going to create a scenario. Um, now, before we just jump fully in um, to the scenarios page, um, one thing I would just want to make sure that we kind of like um, determine the difference of like when when am I using this for adjustments versus like when can I just enter an adjustment. And um, there is an option um, on your accounts. So on the core account page, let's hop over to expenditure real quick. So if I look at any one of these accounts, if I do the view option, I have this budgeting adjustments option up here and they can click this. Um, they would be able to create an adjustment right from here, type in the amount, and then just post this. Now, obviously, if you just have a couple, if there's just, you know, like a handful or you know, one specific adjustment that you're trying to make, this way easier than going through all the steps that we're going to talk about. But if there's a situation where there's like a group of accounts and um, it would be much easier to like upload a spreadsheet, that's the situation where you're going to talk about or where you're going to use the process that we're going to talk about. So um, this definitely still an option when that is more convenient. So you don't have to like always use the budgeting pages um, for adjustments. Okay, so let's go here, budgeting scenarios. And you can see I have a couple in here. Uh, we're gonna talk, there is an option for cloning. Um, so if you wanted to take an existing um, scenario and then just like make a copy of that and adjust the figures, we'll talk about that when we get to um, the next year. Um, for the this, I'm going to create a new one, but I just still want to mention that's an option. And let me see. I'm a little bit more. Let me just zoom out a tad here. Because um, I want to see this full window. So when we create a brand new scenario, here's what we're getting. Um, we can enter in a name. Just give it a, a unique name. And then I can give it a description. And the fiscal year, I want to make sure um, that is set to the fiscal year that I'm making the adjustments for. And we're currently in 2023. We're doing it for the current year. So it's going to be 2023. Um, I just want to move this for a second. You'll notice these are the columns on the grid. So really, when I think of these first three um, boxes, these are kind of like your informational, this is what I want on the grid. So um, as far as like sort, sorting or filtering, you know, it's really however they want to use these to be able to organize those different scenarios. Um, right now, I'm sure that people do not have too many out there. Um, districts probably have a couple, uh, depends on how they use these. But um, going forward, these will stay in there year to year. So that may be something to think about as you're starting to make these is um, you know, how you want to have those organized. And um, ultimately, I think that's why this whole, this fiscal year field here, um, even though this is like, this is informational, we'll see um, another spot that it's important to set the fiscal year. But this one helps with like, you know, once you get a dozen of these in here, this uh, column right here will be nice to sort of filter on. So, okay, that's our basics. And then we have two options at the bottom here for creating or uploading. And this is our budgeting sheet section. So this is where we're gonna put our spreadsheets. Um, what we're gonna do for this is we're gonna look at creating one right through the software.
And um, once this window pops up, um, you're going to notice this looks quite a bit like the report um, creation pages. So if you ever have um, created or modified a report definition, you have sort of the tabs with the select properties, the configure filters, we have a type. Um, so it is going to be very similar to that. Uh, first thing, type. I have budget or I have anticipated revenue. So I could select either, and then I want to select that first so the options I'm choosing down here will correspond. Uh, we're going to stick with budget. We um, enter our sheet name, and that, again, is custom. This is what's going to show in this little grid right here. So um, I do expect that in most cases, I mean, maybe not adjustments, but um, in, you know, the full scenarios, like they may have multiple budgeting sheets in here. So this sheet name will um, probably be pretty important for identifying, um, you know, what is going to be contained in this sheet. Properties, uh, we're going to see this is what defines like which columns we're getting on this spreadsheet that we're making. So um, all of these come in as a default, but they absolutely have a choice to update these and customize it if they want. So what we're going to do is we have some prior year figures on here, prior year expendable, prior year expended. Let's go ahead, if I scroll down here, and um, we have... Is my window. There we go. Um, okay, I'll, I'll zoom back in in a minute. I hope this isn't too small, but I have um, a property here for three years expended. And I can just click and drag that over and two years expended. And I can click and drag that. And um, then here, let me see if I can zoom back in for you. We can scroll down. There we go. Um, so, and I can move these too. So if I want to uh, move this around, um, to be in a certain order, because again, this is going to be what my spreadsheet columns are, then I can add those right in there and I can sort of customize this to, to how I want it to look. Um, I can also remove some of these default ones. So encumbered and fiscal today unencumbered say like, I don't really want to worry about those right now. So let me just um, I click that X and remove that from the sheet that I'm making. Um, there are some other options here as far as like sorting, um, sort priority. So again, these work similar to how the reports do where you see, you know, the one, this is going to be the first order of sort and then, um, so on. And those can be updated. And then let's go to configure filters. And this is the page where we're going to decide so we decide what columns of data come in, but this is the configure filters where we're going to decide um, like what uh, what specific accounts. So what specific data as far as um, like which accounts are we showing the prior year for, which accounts are we showing the expended for, um, and ultimately which are going to be in our spreadsheet. So this is where I would narrow it down by some sort of parameter like um, let's say we want active only active equals true and true we can shortcut with just a t um code so let's do so i did transportation as our example so i'm going to do function and let's do like because that'll let us use wildcards so um so we'll do functions starting with two eight um, and then if we wanted to, so like this is as specific as you want to make it. So um, this could be uh, just like this and it would pull from all funds or if, it, if you wanted to narrow it down further to like, you know, I just want the general fund or, um, you know, a specific like OPU say, absolutely like you could add, you could make this more specific if you wanted to, but we're going to go ahead and um, keep with this filter, and I would just save the sheet, 
it's going to give me a pop up here. And sometimes like, so I've narrowed it down a bit, but, um, you know, if you're pulling the whole general fund, you know, it, sometimes this um, generate option can take a bit. So it just gives you a little warning, but we'll just go ahead and proceed. And our budget sheet um, was successful. So we're going to go ahead and look at these options here. I do have a tip is um, when you're creating these sheets, like obviously we're sticking with the simple example right now as we look at these adjustments. I'll probably mention this on the next one too, is it you can get really, um, like I found even with like making the examples and stuff is like when you're adding all of these sheets, like um, you could add this one, go in, create another one. You're doing a lot of work in here. This scenario doesn't actually save until I click save up here. So it's really important to make sure, you know, once you're adding your sheets and stuff here to still go ahead and save your scenario so that your like kind of work in progress is there. So that added it on my grid. So if I closed out of this and came back in, I'd at least have where I was at. And then I could just edit it again and continue right where I was. So, you know, it definitely depends on, again, on like how many sheets and how long you're in here working, but that's kind of like a nice little tip, just, you know, save it. It doesn't really hurt anything. And then you can continue working and save when you're done. Okay. So let's see what we made. Um, this first option is an edit. And this is where, so I say spreadsheets, like, you know, oh, this is where your spreadsheets go. This is where we're adding spreadsheets. Um, and, and we can pull them as spreadsheets, but the cool thing here is that it is a spreadsheet, but it's one that you can see and modify in the software. Um, everyone sort of does their budgets differently. So it really depends, like, especially when you're, you know, looking at the next year, like this definitely might be something that is being pulled out of the software for a district that you know shares these with their their um, building managers and such. But especially in a case with adjustments, like it may not be necessary to pull this all the way to the computer, um, you know, open an Excel, edit, and then put it back in. If there's something that can be modified right within here, then that saves a couple steps. So let's do this. Let me see make this a little bigger okay so let's talk about what we're looking at here and um i know we have a lot going on but let's kind of take it let's start over here our first column that's included and this was again like included by default in those columns that we saw um, on the select properties window this is the id um, this one we get some questions about because obviously you look at this and you're like, what the heck is that? Um, but what this is, it's a key that the system holds kind of behind the scenes to identify the account code, you know, on that line. And um, basically why it's included in this sheet is like if I was modifying this spreadsheet and um, like I deleted the object code. Uh, this specifically comes into context a little bit more when we talk about um, like downloading this spreadsheet and then like importing it back in, which we'll we'll take a look at. But if I deleted one of the columns here, this ID would still be able to know what those parameters were. So it's kind of like a safeguard where you know, especially if you're modifying one of these spreadsheets, like that idea is always going to know exactly which account that started as. Um, you know, you want to be careful with that, or it is something to like consider if that idea is on a line and then they're like specifically trying to change these accounts in the spreadsheet. And then like, you know, say the amount isn't going to the account that was expected. Um, it could be due to that ID. So, um, definitely kind of depends on the situation and you know what might be modified on the spreadsheet but ultimately that id is always going to point to whatever this the account is that um it came in on uh so it's so this account is essentially linked to this in the software so it'll always know that it should go to this account and then um of course we have our we have our account code um 
our different account code um, fields. And then over here, let me widen these up a little bit. And we'll kind of scroll over to give ourselves some room too. But here are the fields that I picked, right? So I had prior year expendable, prior year expended. Here's my two year, here's my three year. And so those are all the figures in the software as of when I generated this sheet right now. So this one out there, um, obviously these are prior years, but like see, we can have fiscal to date fields. So like if I pulled this right now and then, um, you know, something changes like on, on the expended column if something is posted after I pulled this then um, it doesn't show in here um, at the moment like it shows as of when I pulled it so that could be important to remember and then this last column here I'm going to click on this header this is very important um, so this column is so PA is like proposed amount this is the column that we're going to populate on this spreadsheet and the year that's in here is what it's going to post for so the first thing that i want to do right now is go ahead and change this to 2023 and um, that's going to make it known that it should be in this year this i believe it defaults like to what so if it's the current year based on the current year it's going to default to the next one because usually budgets are, you know, you're posting for the next year. So that's kind of how um, the default goes for that. But, um, you know, when you're doing these adjustments specifically, like that is um, a big thing to just make sure that you have set to the year that you want it to. And then from here uh, in this column is where you want to enter the amount that that should be um the new expendable so we're doing adjustments um but when we're doing through this module we're still entering proposed amounts so let's look at this account specifically right here so this account uh the current amount here and this is where here let me minimize a couple of these Okay, so let's look at this one. So um, this one, the current expendable is 1000. Now, if I went in and like just added an adjustment, then um, say I wanna add $500 to that through the account page, you know, I would go like actually add the adjustment for 500. Here, I'm entering a proposed figure. So what I'm really saying is that if I want to add 500, I want my new expendable amount to be 1,500. So what I'm going to enter here is going to be 1,500. And what the system will do is the system will go in once we go through the next couple of steps and post this, and it will see this, it will reference what it currently is, and then it will create the adjustment for 500. So, um, you know, generally, like when um, doing adjustments, it's usually like, you know, how much do I want it to be, you know, or if you want it to be, you know, maybe match like what the expended amount was, um, there are ways to do that. So, yeah, so ultimately, this is going to be the new expendable amount once these adjustments get posted. And that's, I know that that's different. So um, that's something to to definitely remember. Uh, the other thing you can do in here is use formulas. So if I wanted to, so say I want to make my, um, say I want to make my expendable the same as my expended. So I could go here and um, we're in the system in the spreadsheet, but it can use formulas kind of like Excel. So I'm just going to type right on this one and say equals. And then I'm just going to click this and I'm hitting enter. And so now this one is going to equal what this is, which I mean, I guess this is already our expendable. So I, I was, uh, <laughs> we'd probably be better off to find one that was expended, not expendable, but just to show you the idea. Um, 
so yeah i'm not sure if we have any down there and i don't want to scroll too much so um so we'll look at that in a bit because especially you know and I, i'm sorry i keep mentioning the um the next year budgets when we're not doing them but especially there if you wanted to just say like okay i want my proposed amounts for this year let me just make it equal uh what it was last year uh, then using a formula could be very helpful for something like that because you could enter a formula and then you could even copy it right down. So, um, okay. So let me just make sure I hit all my notes here. Okay. So let me save this up. And um, now we have our sheet. We have some other options here and I want to talk about these uh let me let's do this though so I kind of decided I like show I like that we got to see what this full sheet looks like I'm going to create another sheet and we're going to narrow it down a little bit because when we talk about this regenerate option I kind of want to show I want it to be a little bit easier to see what's happening so let's just we're going to kind of review through these steps and um Really, I'm just going to come to the filters here. So we're pulling active accounts. And then this time, I'm just going to pull a very specific uh, function code. And we'll save that up and we'll create that. Okay. All right, so let's look at this here. So um, on this one, look at we have seventeen rows. So all of these have this have this function code that we filtered to, and they are all active. Now um, we want to again make sure we're on the correct year, and then we could put amounts in here. Let me just copy this down. Okay let's save that up so we have our sheet um so we have our sheet we have our uh 17 rows so so 16 records with our headers and all of those have the proposed amount now what what this regenerate is going to do so i mentioned that when you pull this if there's like activity that happens after it then um, that doesn't necessarily, that doesn't like get included. It's pulling like as of right now totals. So there might be a situation where you want to regenerate these sheets to get the most up-to-date data. Um, or in this case, we uh, made it so it's only active accounts. So then maybe I want to make some more, I had some accounts that were inactive and didn't pull in. Um, so if I want to update that and then not have to completely recreate that i can use this regenerate option so um let's we're going to do a little bit of hopping around here going to the accounts going to the expenditures and i'm going to go ahead type in that function code let's do this though i'm going to do show active um, I'm going to unclick, so I'm unclicking that so I can see some of these inactive accounts. And I have a few here. So these ones didn't pull in because they're not active. So let's edit these. Say we want to get these in there. Let's do this. And let's grab one more here. Okay, so I have three accounts that I just went in and activated. They meet those parameters, so let's get them in there. Um, if I come back here, I'm in my budgeting scenarios. Again, I had this saved, so I'm going to view this. Oh, I didn't save it. Dang it. Dang it. And I did it. I told you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, well. That's why it's a good tip. That's why it's a good tip. I know. I can't believe I just did that. Okay. Well, um, hmm. Okay. We'll, we'll do this one more time. Cause I do want to show part of this where it's in here. So let's hop through this. Oh, geez.
<laughs> Thank you, Heidi. Okay. Uh, n equals true. Okay, so now we have this in here. Now, now when I go in here, you're gonna see, right? Um, wait, did I not do this right? My, uh, oh, now I named them the same thing, didn't I? I did, okay, well, that's all right. So um, now I go in here, look, I have 20. So those ones I activated, they are in here now. So this shows this, but I still want to show this regenerate option. So we're going to, we're going to go through, we're going to do this one more time and I'm going to make sure to save this time. Let's pull that down 100. Okay. You know what? Let's go take some of these out now. You know, maybe, maybe we're doing this the reverse way where it's like, you know what? Wait a second. I went through and cleaned up some accounts. So um, now what I want to do is um, go update this to take some of those off. So, okay, so let's go out of here, back to our accounts. And then um, I'm just gonna come in here and we're gonna, um, uncheck those so we'll um do this okay so i just unchecked two so um if we come back to our scenario now i can come in here this first sheet is the one that i had these in right so if i look at this right away i still have 20 in here if i just go simply um you know inactivate or activate those, it's not automatically going to impact my spreadsheet right away. Um, the spreadsheet is exactly the same as I left it. But what I have the option to do is use this regenerate sheet option. So when I click on this, I get back here. I get back to this option where I could um, like generate or update the sheet. Now, if you wanted to change the parameters of the sheet, you could. And it would pull like different information based on that. In this case, we just updated the accounts. We didn't necessarily need to update these parameters because now it's going to use these parameters to pull the updated information. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just click save then. And this is going to re-pull. There is a big note to this though that I'm going to point out here is when we now look at this, we have the correct number of accounts. So it went and updated this, but it does reset our proposed amount column. So it is important to think about the, when you're using this because you don't necessarily wanna go enter all of your amounts and, and then use this. It may be better to like add another, add another budgeting sheet in there versus like refreshing a sheet. However, if you are at a point where like, you know, we're just getting started on our sheet and we're checking, then um, need to make some updates, you know, that's good. Uh, when we look at cloning a sheet from the prior year, this will be a helpful tool, but just keep in mind that it is going to reset this last column. So we'd have to come in here and like, you know, we had a hundred in here before we'd have to um, do this part after regenerating. So um, just something to keep in mind with that. Okay, so let me, I'm gonna delete this. You don't really wanna have the accounts in two different sheets. So we did this just for the purpose of like seeing that subset of accounts, but I'm not actually gonna keep those in there uh, with, our, with our first sheet here. So uh, let's do this. Did we? Yeah, we just did not save our amounts here either. So let's see. Just gonna add a couple amounts so that we have some here. Okay. Check our heading. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. Let me save this. Make sure we save this up and let's get on to the next step because I know I spent a lot of time talking through that, 
but um we kind of hit all of like uh we, well we hit a lot of the main um functions there we'll talk about the download and upload when we um look at this example for the new year so let's go ahead and take our next step with adjustments and that is to promote the scenario um switch back over here again this is our walkthrough so this is the kind of the stuff that i'm talking through here um again we will get back to this upload part we're talking about here, so promoting a scenario. This is the step that what we're going to do is we're going to push it from this scenarios page over to the um, proposed amounts page. Now, it's important to remember that when we do this, um, when we promote a scenario, um, it's going to take everything from that scenario and push it to proposed amounts. But it, if there's anything already for that year, in proposed amounts, it is going to overwrite it. And I'm talking budgets and revenues. So if they're promoting, if they're trying to um, like update both budget and revenue accounts, like everything that they're trying to um, update at the time should be in one scenario. So, um, okay, let's do this. Let's promote this. And it gives me a pop-up. It tells me, you know, promotion is gonna replace the existing proposed amounts for the fiscal year related to this scenario. I can't have multiple fiscal years in there, but um, specifically 2023, when I promote this, it would overwrite. Now, here's the thing. Um, there is a time like when, you, when you're posting the, the next year proposed where it's good to have them in there. Basically, once we're in the fiscal year, there it's it's okay to overwrite them, you know, for the purpose of adjustments, like that's fine. That's not gonna um mess anything up um but uh there there is we'll look at with the um with the next year proposed like what the impacts are um during the specific time frame of year but right now in 2023 that's not going to be a problem for us so uh let's go over to proposed amounts and um what i can see here so i can see i have my correct function code um, I do have a drop down, so I could have information from multiple fiscal years in here uh, where I could select this, but um, what I'm going to see is I'm going to see all of the different accounts that I was, uh, that I, I had in my um, scenario, and I do just want to, oh, so sorry, I'm grabbing a pen because I want to make sure we have, we can easily find our account that we um, entered in those adjustments on because I want to look at those. So, uh, so let's look here. Um, if we go through, see, we have our amounts. Let's move these over. So this is what we had in that spreadsheet. And if we had multiple budgeting sheets, those will all be compiled into this grid. Um, we have this um if we want to edit this like after the fact we could come in here and modify like say something changed between when we created that budgeting sheet and what we actually want there's um freedom to to go ahead and modify these or even add one you know if they needed to just create a record to post in here they could do that maybe something that wasn't maybe there was one more account that was inactive and so instead of going through the hassle of doing the whole regeneration since i already had the um figures in there then um instead i could just get to this point and add the proposed amount for just that one so there's some flexibility there um what i'm going to do next is actually get these posted to the accounts so again this is this proposed amounts page is kind of still like a holding area where I can double check them, I can modify them if needed, and I can review them. So um, what I'm going to do is apply. And then this is where I have my different um, types, uh, the different ways I could apply. So temporary and permanent are going to be the options for uh, the um, for the initial amounts. And then adjustment is what we want to do for right now. So let's go ahead and get these in here with today's date. You have the option to update the gap original um, amounts. So if you do that, it will also create the gap adjustment when these are posted. 
but let's just go ahead and apply those. And I want my 1500 account here. This part can take a minute um, where they are, um, where the amounts are applying because it's actually, so it's going through on this step and it's actually creating those adjustments. It's doing that calculation between the current um, expendable, what's already been um, budgeted, and then between what you said that you wanted the proposed amount to be, so the new expendable, it's figuring that out right now, and then it's going to create the adjustment for the difference on each of these accounts. So I know we kind of had a bunch that we left as zero, but it still will look at every single one in our grid um, as it's kind of going through and doing this. So certainly um, you could uh, open like another tab, and uh, continue working um, while it's doing that. I wouldn't do anything too heavy, but um, you know, it does it does take a, a minute. That wasn't too bad though. So let's go look at what we did. Uh, we're going to the expenditure grid. And I'm I'm pulling up the account where we said we wanted it to, so it was originally the previous expendable amount was 1,000. We wanted to add 500. So we told it that we want the new expendable to be 1,500. So we're going to look at that one. Okay, so here we go. So I'd actually look, it was a carryover encumbrance that it was, that that's what was adding to the expendable originally. So that's where we were seeing the thousand coming from. And then we said 1500 is what we had in our proposed amounts grid. So it went and created this adjustment for 500. So budgeting adjustments, boom, there it is, created from proposed budget. So it even gives a little description. So we know how that one was posted. So that's the adjustments um, portion here. Okay. And um, I do want to go ahead and um, take a look. I have uh, this, um, I have a couple different reports here related to budget and anticipated revenue transactions. And so budget transactions is a report that will show the different um, like budget adjustment or like initial um, kind of I, transaction is really they are transactionally it kind of notes on that grid you know here's this budget adjustment posted by uh or created by the proposed budgets so amanda yes can i can i interrupt for one second before sure. you move on to there sure um this is vicky from neoman is there any way for someone um on the proposed amounts instead mm -hmm. of the original proposed amount being the original expenditure being a thousand and you want it to be 1500. Is there any way to just do a sheet for adjustments and say you want to add 500 and then the system will calculate it out to the proposed amount being 1500? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. So you want to like, so say you want to add, okay, so let's see. Um, I believe, let, let's double check this. I'm, uh, don't know that I tried this recently, so let's let's double let's look at it. But I think so. You can use formulas here. So say I wanted, so I know I want to like add five hundred. So if I choose this and then do like plus five hundred, I believe that formula will work. Yeah, and it does. Then, it does. Yeah, that does because that's what I always end up doing. But I'm thinking, and and for a district that's extremely time consuming so that's why i was wondering if there was like a column or um some way for someone to just to go down and and when they're looking at it they know what that adjustment is so they could just type in 250 500 1000 or whatever without mm -hmm. having to create that formula um well okay so i would say there's a couple ways to do this so as far as the software columns, no, like there's not a column specifically that it works like that. Like this one it is a proposed amount. So like in this one, it does have to be the total. However, there are definitely ways to do this. 
So if it say it was going to be 500 for all of them, then I could do this once and then I could just drag right. it down. And all of these are going to add 500 to this amount. Right. Now I understand it's probably, you know, it might not always be 500 for that. So it, what I could do is, is I could add, I could make another column and then say, I, I'm going to take my little formula here and I can say, okay, I want the expended plus my added amount. And then all I have to do is copy this down. And let me make sure that copied. It didn't. But let me copy this down. And so if I don't have anything in that column, then it's giving me the same amount. But then I could come over here and say, you know, what I want to add. Okay. But then don't you have to delete that column out before you upload it? Um, no. I know when I so I could save this so I can save this in here. And when I promote it, it's going to look at the column that has this PA header. So as long as you keep this one with this header, then it's okay to have this extra one. It is because when I've, when I've tried that, it doesn't like that extra column. It doesn't. It'll, okay. It'll hmm. give well, an error. Gotcha. Well, you know, I, I guess I could be mistaken then because I don't know that I've specifically tried that. We could try, let's try and promote this and just double check. Um, I, I could be mistaken. I don't know. Um, I know you can do the math in there, but um, I, I may maybe, not realize. Okay. Oh, that one worked. Okay. Maybe because I had that as, because I would use that as like a subtotal column. Mm -hmm. um, instead of doing individual sheets, I would just have one master sheet, but then I would subtotal it by fund. So maybe it just doesn't like the subtotals. Okay. Yeah, it's possible. And also that might be different to like, if you're loading back in, like if you download the spreadsheet and then load it back in, Yeah. if there's like a header, it doesn't recognize, I could see it, it having, um, it flagging for that. But if you're doing it right in the sheet like this, that then that should be, that could be an option. Um, that's fabulous because that'll make the districts will love that because they don't want to, it, it's very time consuming to sit there and figure out okay, well, I need to add 500 and then sit there and go through each individual account. So if they can just add a column right. like that, they can just plug those numbers in and it'll make their lives so much easier. Absolutely. And I understand that. And that's, I mean, and that's ultimately like they're, you know, whether it's like done in Excel or in here, like I definitely see that being, you know, something that they use. I think it's hard because it really depends on like when they're doing those adjustments, like, cause sometimes that is the case, right? Where they're going in and saying, I need to specifically add this much. Correct. I've also seen the reverse though, where it's like, okay, I know that I need it to cover, you know, I know the total that I need it to cover. So there were cases where they were doing the math in reverse. Right. And so this kind of prevents from that. So, you know, it's hard because it just totally depends, but um, that's definitely an option, um, you know, with, in, in Excel too. So just whatever works for them. All right. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt no, you. No problem at all. Helpful. No problem at all. Okay. So let's, um, let's go here then too. And I'm going to hop to this budgeting transactions sheet and okay. So, um, so this is going to show us the, um, budget adjustments that we actually posted. And again, they're not actually posted until we hit apply in that proposed amounts page. So this is kind of like a good double check if you want to do that to just see all of the ones that were posted. And I could even do, so I um, posted that with today's date. So I could even just enter today's date in here and let's generate this. And then see here are um, all of my adjustments that um, that were posted. And now, you know, one thing that I that I'm noticing is like, okay, so you know, it looked like I had a lot more in my sheet than this. So, um, but these were just the adjustments that needed to be posted. So I, I had a lot of zeros in that original sheet. 
but a lot of them were already zero. So if it was like zero and then it, it needed to be zero and it did that math and then it said, oh, there isn't really an adjustment needed here. So any that didn't need to actually have a change, um, you know, don't, don't actually show. These are just the ones that, that changed that had a difference. And see, here's our example one right here for the 500. So it's kind of just a good like record of, you know, what was posted if they want to, um, you know, print something off like this and um, save it for reference or even if they're double checking. So, okay. So I know we um, spent a lot of time on the adjustments, um, but we did talk about a lot of those pieces are applicable to both. So let's switch gears here and make sure that we talk about um, actually creating a new budget for the new year. Um, so I'm back in my scenarios. Oh, let's hop here. Let's go back to, um, this is our budgeting um, homepage. And this first one is click here for the proposed amounts for the next fiscal year. Again, we have our little recap of those scenarios and proposed amounts because we're going to do both. Um, and when we come in here, so for the adjustments, we looked at creating from scratch. You absolutely could do that um, if a district migrated uh, last year, if they were you know, in that last wave, then um, it's possible they don't have a scenario from the prior year. So in that case, they would need to start a new one. Um, so you absolutely can create a scenario from scratch for the new year. Or if they have a scenario that they created last year, they can clone it. And um, going forward, you know, that definitely um, could be a really good option for districts because especially once they have a lot of sheets in here, you know, it's nice not to have to recreate the wheel. So um, if I come in, I just viewed, this is my budget adjustments from 23. So I just did the view and I have this clone option. So I'm going to go ahead and clone that. Yeah, I love this option too, Rhonda. This, I'm... Um, I think we added this probably a couple years now, but um, it's great because, um, and I'll, I'll kind of talk about this real quick while we're looking at this one while it's cloning, because I, I went in and put some, you know, test spreadsheets in here, but the ones that I've seen in the real world, there's this, this whole grid is filled up with different sheets. And it's important though, because you can see we have the expenditure and the revenues, Again, when they promote the scenario to the proposed amounts, it overwrites both budget and revenues. So the scenario should contain everything. Um, the They can have multiple scenarios for a year, but if they have multiple, multiple scenarios, I would expect that to be this budget or this budget. So like if my if my um, like levy passes, then these would be my budgets. If it doesn't pass, then these would be. So they, they aren't necessarily going to have two scenarios for one year. Like every, all of the spreadsheets should be in one scenario in most cases. I mean, obviously there are exceptions, um, but that's what I would expect. So, you know, being able to clone this from year to year is huge um, as far as the amount of work there. So let's go ahead. Budgets. 24, my next year budgets, and, and anticipated revenues. I'm gonna go ahead and put in my year here to make sure that that is easy to find on my grid. And then, okay, so here's where we kind of did some work in looking at the adjustments. Um, that kind of sets us up to just, you know, talk about how those same, that same thing can be applied um, here as well. You know what, just a minute, I just realized I need to plug in my computer real quick uh, so I don't lose a uh, battery. Hang on just a second. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, and let's see, I see a question here. Um, so Brenda says, I haven't used the option to clone because um, 
really would a year go by that I wouldn't create a new account. And if I clone it, wouldn't um, it wouldn't include these accounts. Would there be any good way to pick up the new accounts? Brenda, I have great news for you. That is exactly what I want to talk about right now. So we saw with um, our little example. And so I kind of wanted to do that narrow down example with our adjustments of how when you use that regenerate, it'll pick up based on the current data. So um, right now I'm fresh. I just cloned these. I don't have any proposed amounts yet. So what I can do is come in here and do this regenerate sheet option. And these settings will all be set how I had them last year. So, you know, say last year, maybe if they, you know, did customize these to have like the years prior on here. Um, however, they have this set up last year will still be here. Here's my filters and this is 006. So I don't really have to change anything on here, but when I save this sheet, what it's going to do is it's going to go look at everything that matches that parameter now. So if I created new accounts that are in that 006 fund this year, then those will be included when I regenerate the sheet. If I went through and made a bunch of accounts inactive since I did my budgeting last year, those will now not be in a sheet if I have it set to active only. So um, that regenerate option is very much key for that, for that point. Um, the way I, I would think is probably they would clone it and then go through and, and regenerate these. And it, and it might take some work, like if there are full new you know, funds added, like maybe one of those is gonna need to be like a new budgeting sheet altogether. Um, but just in general, that regenerate is going to at least pick up the current accounts um, from based on what's in the software now. Uh, does this work if you imported spreadsheets into the scenario? Um, so uh, I don't believe so. Uh, it kind of depends on how you do it. Uh, we'll talk about the, there's the options here, um, which actually let's just go ahead and look at this. So I do have like a download and I have an upload option, but originally this was created through this um, through this scenario. So it was created from that bottom option that we were seeing here, right? So I could download this and then I could enter my amounts and I could upload. Or the other option that um, we have that's included in this walkthrough is there are some spreadsheets you can import as um, report definitions, or if they pulled like a budget um, worksheet and they pulled it that way. And then um, in their scenario, they did this upload option at the bottom. So if they added the original budgeting sheet this way, then the regenerate option is not gonna be available just because it didn't have those original parameter options. So it kind of just depends on like which way they originally, if they originally created it in this scenario and then did a download and upload versus like skipping that step. Um, I believe so. Here, let me go ahead. So we downloaded this one. Let's uh, let's kind of work through that um, question. So Andrew's asking if we created um, through the scenario, download and then upload, would it work? Uh, we're going to look at downloading this one, and then we're going to up, upload this uh, cafe fund back to it. So we'll double check that as we go here. Okay, so so I did, sorry, I'm kind of, uh, we're talking about a couple things here. So let me make sure I'm saying what I'm doing is uh, I used this down arrow download icon. And so we looked at the editing with the adjustments and this is kind of like an either or, this is this is options. You know, I could edit um, and then add the amounts there or if someone prefers Excel or maybe they put these in spreadsheets again for like their building managers, um, department heads, like they might want to take this to Excel so that then um, you could uh, get the amounts compiled and then upload them all at once. So. So here's our spreadsheet. Um, again, we want to, uh, actually, you know what? <laughs> Still on adjustments. Um, so uh, we want to check, again, we want to check this header, but we are um, actually going to be doing this for 2024 now. 
So we want to keep that header there. Um, let's go ahead and so prior year, let's just make these equal to our prior year for the purpose of this one. And copy that down. Then I'm going to save this up. It has our amounts in it. And then I'm going to do upload and replace. Okay. And let me choose my file here. Okay. Okay, file uploaded. So let's check here. So we have this one. And it imported our amounts into here. So this looks good. That came in from our spreadsheet. Um, and then I believe we can regenerate it. So yeah, I think that, um, cause I do remember having this question before to Andrew with like, um, if they, when they can use the regenerate option. And I know I've seen the times that, that they can't, um, I'm pretty sure that with this, so as long, since this was originally created with these, cause it has to have, it has to like know what the options were, right. That it's pulling from. So as long as it was created with this and then downloaded and uploaded, then I believe that should be available even when cloning. Um, it's just like if they upload from scratch and if we did do this, let's do like, let's create a new one. And I'm just gonna choose this uh, same file here so we can see what this looks like. So here is what it looks like when we use this upload option at the bottom from like a custom spreadsheet. So, uh, you know, this, there's um, those report definitions in the wiki. Um, basically, as long as it has like the account code dimensions and that PA column, then you could upload it. So if I use this upload option at the bottom and then create this one, see how it's grayed out here. So that can't be regenerated. Um, and then if that was cloned, then and then it also wouldn't have that option to be regenerated. But you know, whatever report definition that was used in the first time around could then still be used. Um, so there may be a different option in there. Okay, let me just uh, double check where we are. Yeah, no problem. Okay, so make sure we talk about it. We did a good job of kind of covering those download and upload options. And we're going to also um, get this one over to our proposed amounts grid. I just want to make sure that we um, have not missed anything before we move on. Ah, okay. So let's go ahead and save this up. Make sure we save this time. <laughs> Uh, all right, so that's in there. We have our, our 24 um, and we can see these right here. And then I'm gonna go ahead and promote these as well. So, you know, definitely this part, like, you know, we talked about a lot of the different um, options when we were talking about the adjustments, you know, this part with the budgeting scenarios, we, you know, I don't wanna say we breezed through it, but, you know, we're looking at this as an example. I had a lot of those sheets in there. like. Having this scenario, I mean, that's probably where they're going to create that. And then they're going to, you know, have the work with those spreadsheets to kind of collect their budgets, um, get them together. It's it's kind of like a working area, right? Like they can um, go in and create those and then maybe download them and then kind of come back along the way, get them updated. And really, you know, once they have them kind of like initially set in the spreadsheets, that's when they're going to go ahead and promote. And um, so when we promote, that's going to get it over to proposed amounts. Um, now, again, I can see multiple fiscal years in here potentially. So let's go up here and see, yep, let me just look at the fiscal year 24 um, accounts and amounts. And um, once they're in here, 
you know, they can go in and make tweaks if they want. So, you know, say that I'm like, you know what, actually, let me go ahead and add an amount here. Um, I need to update, you know, one that could happen in this grid before actually like applying them as the initial budgets for next year. This can still be that working area for them. Um, say there is uh, something where if they go in and make changes in here, but then they are like, wait, I need to like fully go back to the um, scenario and like re-upload something or like add something there. Um, and then they push forward the scenario again any changes that they made in here since the last time they pushed over the scenario wouldn't be included. So that is something to watch out for. Um, okay. Uh, let's look at, so I do also want to point out, I, I know I keep mentioning that this is budgets and anticipated revenues, but up at the top here are the tabs. So proposed budgets, proposed anticipated revenues. Um, so this uh, switches over to a grid view with the revenue accounts. And um, again, same options, you know, I could modify, I could add another one. Um, and I have sort of my view of the fiscal year. So these are all in here ready to go. Now let's go uh, look at one thing before I actually go ahead and post these. Is let me find one of these that I had the amount in. Oh, actually I did have it right in the first one, huh? Okay. So um, before we actually, so I didn't apply them as next year budgets yet. Like I didn't actually make the initial um, post, but I have them sitting in my proposed amounts grid. So um, let's edit this one. This is, hmm. I, I think that was the one that we had, but let me double check here. I want to make sure that this is active uh, for the purposes of us looking at it. Oops. I'm so sorry. I hope I don't have too much background noise here. There, we've got some lawn mowing going on or something. So it's throwing me off a little bit. Okay. Um, but hopefully that's not coming through the mic for you all. <laughs> all right. So let's go to, let's pick one different one of these accounts. We want fiscal year 24. Okay. All right. So I, I just want to show you like when they're in this proposed grid, how they show um like how they show is next year proposed. So that's what we're trying to look at right now. I know I'm going a little off kilter with getting um, back and forth to this accounts page, but Okay, so let's look at this first one. And where is it? Hmm. It is not shown how I'm expecting it to. So that's interesting. So I'm expecting it to show right here for this next year proposed. Hey, have to Amanda, double check. Amanda, don't you have to expand that? Can you can you click click the plus sign? I think it's kind of oh hidden. it is oh my gosh wow I've I always really... had that I have had that problem before being able to find it. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. I was I well and you know what I I understand I because I don't usually have my <laughs> windows so like Zoom did or compact so okay wow thank you so much. <laughs> um, so yes okay so next year proposed so this is what we were looking for. Um, this right here is the total that we have in that proposed amounts grid. So um, it essentially puts it on the account as just like a next year proposed. This is kind of just like a little holding place so that they can view and reference this ahead of time. Um, specifically, it, it's showing in here because the next year proposed amount is tied to fiscal year 24, but my current period is in 2023. So um, this is specifically important for like the time of year between now 
to um to june right and then what we're going to do is we're going to actually apply these for july once they switch their period over from june to july those are no longer next year proposed those are going to become the initial budget and at that point that's where it doesn't really matter if they're in the proposed amount grid so this proposed amount grid um, but that's where you want to be careful because um, if they do want those to show in the next year proposed, then they don't want to clear these amounts from this grid as long as they need those showing in the next year proposed. So I know that that's something that's kind of come up before is, um, you know, especially since those scenarios overwrite um, the, the data that's in this proposed amount, because um, and again, I said there's kind of like exceptions to everything. Like there is, you know, it's not impossible to, you know, use multiple scenarios and kind of post those budgets in waves of like, okay, I'm going to make one scenario for general, get all of those pushed through, proposed and applied, and then I'm going to do my grants. But if you did that and you did that specifically like for the next year, those next year proposed aren't all going to be available in this proposed amount grid at one time. So they wouldn't all be able to show as next year proposed. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and do our very last step here and get these applied. Uh, again, I just want to point out that I did have to select this fiscal year and then apply. And then I have this option between temporary or permanent. So um, really, there isn't like too much of a difference between these it, it is something that gets like held in the background for certain reports that you know you could look at to see if it was posted as temporary or permanent um the main thing to remember here is so if i post them as temporary budgets then i could go in um if i needed to like repost the budgets i could post them like reapply I could reapply them as temporary or I could reply them as permanent and both of those would replace. Once I apply them as permanent, then I can no longer go back and post a temporary after that. I could only overwrite that with another permanent budget. Okay, so I'm hopping in here to go ahead and click the apply. And um, once we uh, get this going here, uh, sometimes this can take a minute. I actually came back in here. I cut down the number of accounts uh, just to make this go quick. So um, you can open another tab and um, work on, on other things. I would say probably not uh, necessarily budget related things. Um, but uh, once it's done here, you get your uh, conversion is successful. And where we're going to see these post. So uh, at first, uh, when you're still in um, fiscal year 23, those are going to show in that next year proposed that we saw earlier. Once the current period is switched to July, um, then it's going to be fiscal year 24. And those are going to show. So I'm going to our um, core accounts expenditure page to look at one of these. And uh, those will show as initial budgets now on the account. Uh, if we look at these budgeting adjustments, then you're going to see here um, we have the gap initial because we uh, that is checked on the permanent budgets. And then the initial amount, uh, this was the amount that we had entered in our proposed amounts grid. And then it does show created from proposed budget. So um, so once those are all applied, um, essentially you'll, you'll be applying them. You can you can wait till the beginning of the year, um, or if you apply them still in 2023, they'll kind of sit out there in July and um, be ready for when that fiscal year change happens um, for the current period and current fiscal year. Okay. Um, so you may have noticed uh, if you're watching this recording that um, we switched up a little bit uh, just, just a second ago. I wanted to show you how that finishes up with the normal process of posting, of applying those budgets. Uh, but I did run into an error when I was teaching this live. And um, so if you're revisiting this from the live recording, um, basically what is currently happening is um, if you try to post that and you're still in fiscal year 23, it's popping up an error. That is not our intention. Um, I did follow up and we have a JIRA issue to get that corrected. 
That should be corrected in March of 2023. Um, it is released 8.69.0 is what it's planned for. So um, I think at this point in the year, uh, you're probably more focused on the scenario steps. So when we were looking at the budgeting scenarios, getting these created, getting those budget worksheets set, um, even pushing over to the proposed amounts. So I, I just wanted to hop in here and still show what that's going to look like as far as the process. Um, you know, may, you may notice that I have my current period switched to July, just so I could kind of show you these steps and get around that. But um, absolutely, like March, April, May, June, if you are posting those budgets for your next year for fiscal year 24, um, that, you know, is, is still something that you can do without switching to July. So, um, I just want to clarify that. Um, and then a couple other things is I had some good questions at the end of my live training that I just want to go back and talk about real quick here to make sure that we don't lose, um, kind of the discussion on that, uh, just with changing this up in the recording. So, um, so the next question I had was, uh, the next year proposed amounts show on the accounts before they're applied to the proposed grid. So, um, if they're on this proposed grid, and then we looked at how they could, they would show in the next year proposed field, um, what if they forget to apply and those proposed amounts, like what would happen if they're showing, you know, in this grid, but they're not actually applied. And um, the answer is that it is very important still to apply these budgets. Uh, when they're sitting in this proposed grid, you can see them um, as the next year amount on the account, like in fiscal year 23, um, because they are proposed for next year by being in this grid. But when you flip over to July, um, how we see that these initial amounts are posted, that part isn't going to happen unless you do that apply step. So you do wanna definitely make sure to apply these sometime before or at the beginning of July. Um, and then also uh, when you apply these, do they disappear from this grid? And um, you know, there is some thought I understand where it's like, okay, well, once they're applied, do you need them here? You know, would they like kind of get cleaned out of here? And the answer is no. When you apply them, the amounts do still stay in here. So I kind of narrowed these down just for our purpose of like example for testing from what um, you may have seen earlier in the video. But none of these amounts were deleted out by the act of applying them. They stay in here because when you're in uh, fiscal year uh, 23, you still want all of those to still show in there so that they show as those as like the next year proposed amounts. So the system's not going to automatically take those out. Um, I know we do have a feedback issue where some people have requested like a checkbox that shows if they have been applied so you could see easily from this grid uh, whether the amounts have been applied or not. So um, that did come up as well. Um, and then, yeah, uh, and then the, the last question just had to do with clarifying that um, when you're going to see those applied amounts as the initial, it is when July is current. So right now, uh, my July posting period is current. Um, if I run any reports with the as of date of July, it will show as like the initial, as the um, expendable amount. Um, so specifically um, when it's current, those when you're kind of like seeing it in that account view that we just looked at. Um, yeah, so uh, that is uh, all I have, but uh, thank you so much for watching the recording and we'll see you on the next one.